just a quick audio test before we start to see if everything's working. And I think we are on. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you very much for joining me. We have a few people in the chat, including Successful Geek, who it's his birthday today. So thank you very much for joining in on your birthday. Oliver says, am I late? No, you're not late. Uh, I'm a minute over, but we're okay. So today I'm going to be doing a solo playthrough of Vindication. Now, I've already covered this game on the channel Multiplayer. I think I've done two or three videos of this game. Yeah, I think I've done three uh, multiplayer playthroughs. But I'm going to be doing the solo playthrough today. And the reason I'm doing the solo playthrough today is every month my patron supporters vote on what game they want me to review in the month. And they voted on Vindication as being the game that I would review last month in July. Now, I was a bit busy in July, so I didn't get around to it. But in order for me to be able to do the review, I like to try and play as many different versions of the game and as many different modes of play as I can. And the game does have a solo option with the expansion. So the expansion is, well, this is the book for the expansion, but it comes in its own little box, which is here. So this is the box with the expansion. It's actually the, is it the Leaders and Alliances expansion? Yeah, so it's the Leaders and Alliances expansion, which adds a whole load of extra stuff to the game. But the solo game is included in this expansion. So Orange Nebula were very generous. They gave me a copy of the, uh, of the expansion. Um... Paul Allwood has got a blank screen rather than the usual. Okay, well, it should all be working. It was working for me. <laughs> so hopefully it's working for everybody else. Um, so yeah, so this is why I'm doing a solo playthrough. So this is not a sponsored playthrough in any way. This is extra bonus content, purely funded through the support of my Patreon campaign. If you like the content that I make, the Patreon campaign basically funds all of the videos that I do that are not sponsored, which at the moment is most of them. So massive thank you to all of my Patreon supporters for this. And I should be doing the review of this this week. However, based on how this week's gone, it might get bumped to next week. But anyway, I'm going to crack on. I, I'm not going to be doing a full tutorial of the game because I've already done that on some of my other videos. But I am going to be going through what's different in the solo game. So I'm going to read the introduction first. Magic not seen since the time of the ancients has returned. As this power seeps back into the land, the darkness that has dwelt uncontested for generations begins to stir, sensing this resurgence and a call to secure its foothold in the realm. You encounter Tick Tick, an emissary of the greater power to come, sent to channel the currents of magic and foster their full return. Together you venture forth into these uncertain times, seeking to grow in honour and repel the oppressive darkness that seeks to claim you. Okay, so that's the thematic introduction. The way that this differs from the uh, the normal multiplayer game is that we do not use the secret quests, we don't use the end game triggers, we don't use the journey cards, uh, we don't use any expansions or promos. Now, it has to be said, I am playing today Solo Adventure 1, okay? There are Solo Adventure 2, there's Solo Adventure... Is there just two? I thought there was another one. Okay, yeah, I thought there was another one. Maybe, maybe I've missed it. But there's there's rules in here for using the uh, the extra bits as well. Okay, so there's just two. Yeah, I thought there was something else that I'd read. Anyway, we're doing solo adventure one today. Um, so player standy, you can start wherever you want. It doesn't actually matter in the solo game, so I'm going to start there because it's the nearest. And we have an end game marker here. Now, what's going to happen is that end game marker is going to be moving counterclockwise around the board. Whereas my victory point marker, my honour marker, that is going to be moving clockwise. And when the two markers reach, that's the end of the game. Um, tick, tick. So instead of starting with a normal companion, I start with Tick, Tick. I don't have the zoomed in overhead camera today. So you'll just have to trust me on what Tick, Tick does. But Tick, Tick has an ability that I will explain soon because it's all about these black cubes. The mastery and the proficiency tiles, they're done slightly different. See, there is, there is a mastery tile and a proficiency tile on each of these spaces. And what happens is if you manage to get the mastery tile by the end of the game, it'll be worth seven points. But the only way to do that is, first of all, you've got to remove the proficiency tile. And the way you do that is by getting two cards of the appropriate colour 
And then what you do is you spend, is it two? I think you spend two. It's normally three, but I think it's two. Proficiency tiles, yeah, obtain two cards of that colour and then after they have been acquired, use two of that attribute as a bonus action to unlock the proficiency. So you unlock this, you remove it from the game, and then this is going to get placed around the outside of the board uh, and then you've got to try and get it. So I'll explain that more when I get it, but if you don't get it, if you unlock it and don't get it, it counts as negative points. Um, controlling regions is not done in this version of the game. Uh, and then the next thing to explain is the defilement. So. These black cubes in this version of the game are defilement markers. Uh, and what they do is every time you visit a map region on the board, the other two regions that are adjacent to you that you could have visited but didn't, they get one of these black markers on them. Now, if you ever need to place a black marker and you can't, you lose the game immediately. Um, and if there's ever two black markers on a region, it gets destroyed. And that's minus three points at the end of the game and you can't use it. Now, Tick Tick, going back to my buddy, Tick Tick the Gleaming, Tick Tick has an ability that whenever I activate my character, I can also activate Tick Tick and he can absorb the black, uh, absorb the defilement from the board, put it on him, and then it can convert him and actually put that back in the supply and I get to augment a cube. So I'm gonna be using Tick Tick to go round and clean the board. The other thing that happens is whenever a trigger token is reached either by the game end marker or my scoring disc. So these are normally the end game trigger points in a multiplayer game. But what happens is whenever my marker reaches one of them or the end game marker reaches one, then we roll some dice and bad stuff might happen, including my character dying, which is what you need conviction for in this game is to prevent the death. Um, now, does that marker get removed? That's the question. If you know how to play this game, if you know this game, uh, okay, Paul says it's dropping out. There's, there's discussion in the chat. But it seems to be working fine for everybody else. So, yeah, dropping on iPad, not sure. I don't know why. I, I, I don't know why. I mean, I'm, I've got it running here. Bear with us a minute. Yeah, I've got it running here. On iPad, not sure. Seems to be running fine here. I have got the settings to low latency. But that's normally fine. That's the setting that I've been using for a couple of months now. Ultra low latency does have the issue of dropping out. So, um, yeah, I'm not sure about that. Um, yeah, apologies for the people who are watching it on iPad. It keeps dropping out. But, yeah, I'm not sure. Um, but as I was saying, if you know this game, if you have played this before, it does say when a trigger token is reached, roll both black dice and apply the following defilement effects. It does not tell me to remove the token from the game. So I'm going to leave it there. But if it should be removed, let me know. Um, destroyed regions, we've, re we've mentioned that. We've mentioned the proficiency tiles. Ending the game, we've mentioned that. So at the end of the game, I'm going to score honour for mastery tiles that I earned and any in-game bonuses on cards. And I'm going to lose honour. I'm going to get. I'm going to lose one honour for each of these defilement blocks in play, three for each destroyed region, and mastery tiles that I didn't manage to earn. And basically, if I end up with more honour than the end-game marker, then I win. Okay. Uh, and there is a way you can instantly lose as well, which is six regions being destroyed, uh, need to place defilement markers and can't, and the scoring disc drops lower on the scoring track than the end game marker. After end game scoring is complete. Oh yeah, yeah, so I, yeah, okay. And there we go, right. So it's all good. Things have, uh, th things have picked up. Everything's working fine on the stream. I haven't changed anything, just so you know. <laughs> Probably the internet sent to conspire me. Right, uh, conspire against me. Right, we're off. Here we go. Um, I guess I take my turns as normal. Yeah, I think I just take take turns, and then after every turn we move the marker back. Right. Okay. So, again, not doing a full tutorial of the game. Just going to jump in and start playing. Uh, but before that, I need to actually put these two locations on the board. So I'm playing with just the standard 19 locations. I've not made any changes to the bag. Uh, this this is a um, a gigantic scumbag. And this comes with the expansion because the one that came with the original game was a bit small. So that's going there. That's going there. Right. We have the arcane tower where I can spend vision to get uh, a relic, and we have the monastery that allows me to spend knowledge to augment. Right. Which is always useful. I mean, it's more useful in the original game because you're going to be using the conviction a lot. Okay. So what we're going to do? Um, we basically, we move, we activate and we visit or rest. So, 
Well, I think I'm gonna move. My movement is two. I don't actually have a plan because there's no um, secret quest in this game. You are free to do whatever you want to do. Um, and I should be looking at these, but I kind of haven't that much. So I'm gonna move first. We're gonna go uh, one, two. We're gonna go here, which means I'm gonna reveal a tile there and a tile there. So first of all, we put a tile here, which is the Holy Spire. Holy Spire, Batman. And also the Gaping Moor. Now, I can now either rest or I can visit one of the lo those locations. I think I'm going to visit one of the lo those locations and I think we're going to visit the Holy Spire. Yeah, why not visit the Holy Spire? So that is basically, I just get two influence. So I'm going to visit this location here and I get, sorry, not two influence, two inspiration. So I put these in here. Okay, apparently people watching it on the iPad, it's a problem. Uh, not sure why, not sure why. So I've visited the Holy Spire, which means these two get defilement markers on. Okay. I think that's right. I think that's uh, doing it all right so far, I think. Let's get this rule book out of the way, because there you go. Um, just checking that. It's been a couple of weeks since I last played this, but I think I've got it right. Yeah, okay. So yeah, went to the Holy Spire, meditated, got two inspiration. Now I'm going to activate my character so I can get either one inspiration, uh, one strength or one knowledge. So I'm going to activate my character to get one knowledge. And then what I'm going to do is I am now going to use Tick Tick's ability. So I can absorb, I can move one defilement from an adjacent map region to Tick Tick. So we're going to move this one, we're going to absorb this, I'm going to put it on there. There we go. I think that's it. That's the end of my turn. I moved, I activated, and I visited. I can do the bonus things, except I can't, because um, I can't control the region, can't gain a proficiency, can't vindicate myself, can't recover influence. Why? Well, yeah. Right. So that is the end of my turn. So this moves back two spaces, and now it's me again. Right. Off we go. So, um, I think we're going to move again. So I'm going to move, again, you can do these, these main actions in any order. So if I wanted to, I could visit a location first. But if I visit, if I visit the Holy Spire, these two are going to get defilement markers, which means the gaping moor is going to get destroyed. So we don't want to do that. What we want to do is we want to go one, two. And again, I've not played this solo scenario before, so I've no idea if I'm playing this well or not. So we're going to get a new tile here which is the ancient tomb. Wow, so we've got these three all connected to each other. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. These are the things that allow you to get the super powerful cards. And we have the inn, excellent. Right, that's where we can get companions. Um, now at this point, I am going to activate my character first. I need to look at the companions now. Oh, that's quite good. Yeah, that is quite good. Um, yeah, so we could get a companion. Move one influence from your influence sphere to a relic you control. Okay, so that's good if I get relics. Who's this guy? Ruak, defender of the... Oh, by the way, just, just so you know, in the solo game, there are certain cards you take out. There's a whole list of cards you are supposed to remove when you're playing the solo game. I've already done that. I did that off camera. So, Ruak, Defender of the Sacred Spirit. When attacking a monster with Ruak as your champion, roll the white attribute dice twice instead of rolling both dice. Right, that's awesome. I think that's what we want to do. So, in that case, to recruit that, I need two strength. I don't have two strength yet, so I'm going to activate my character to get one strength. Because I've activated my character, I'm going to use Tick Tick's ability, and we're going to take this off here, and we're going to put it on there. Now, Tick Tick can have a maximum of three cubes on him, her, it. Who knows? It. Um, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to visit the inn. So because I've visited the inn, that gets a marker, that gets a marker. Wow, this is going to be tough. And I am going to spend this two strength, which goes back here. And I'm going to take... Now, you could always take the top card of the deck, but I'm happy taking this one. 
So there we go. That is Ruach, Defender of the Sacred Spirit. Um, that is my companion. So I've activated, I've moved, I've visited. That is my turnover. Timer goes down. Right, okay. Um, next turn. So I kind of now want to go to the Gaping Mall. Now this is interesting, thinking about this. Two of these markers are going to get added every turn. But only if you visit. If you rest, that doesn't count as visiting, so the defilement markers won't get placed. Hmm. We can't go down the gaping more yet. So I think I'm going to have to move. We don't need any more inspiration. We could activate Ruak. And then we could rest rather than... I kind of want to build up my knowledge. Okay, so, so for this turn, yeah, I need to explore here to find the library. Um, but I don't want to put another cube on there. And I want to explore as much as possible. So I'm going to go one, two. Somebody's doing some DIY outside. So if you can hear, um, if you can hear some drilling, <laughs> that's what's going on outside. Right, it's another monastery. Followed by another inn. Okay, so not not what we wanted. Now then, what do we do here? Do we act because it I can only use tick tick if I activate my character. But if I activate my character, I only get one of something. I think that's what I'm going to do. I think I'm going to play it a little safe. I'm going to activate my character. I am going to gain a strength. I am then going to use Tick Tick. And we're going to absorb this. Okay, so the board is... Oh no, we still got that one there. But now what I need to be doing is I need to be getting that. I need to be converting it back from there to there. Okay, so... I've activated my character and Tick Tick. I've moved. And now I'm not going to visit a location. So in the multiplayer game, you would pretty much visit locations all the time. But in this in this particular solo game, yeah, I always mention noise going on outside, but you can never hear it. <laughs> Strength companion refill. Thank you, Gareth. Uh, Izar the tireless. Okay. Um, yeah, I think it's this, this microphone that I'm using here. It's obviously not picking up the drilling outside, which is good. Right. So yeah, so as I was mentioning, you don't normally rest when you're playing the multiplayer game, but that's what I'm going to do now because resting means I don't, don't get any defilement on the board. So rest and augment one power. And when you augment, you can basically move a power from potential to influence or influence to conviction, I believe. Augment, moving it one step. Yeah, so I'm going to move one of these potential into influence. Okay, so I rested. That is it. That is the end of my turn. That moves to there. Next turn. We need to be using Tick Tick again, don't we? I'm not going to be using my companions much because I need to be using Tick Tick a lot in order to clear up this mess. So we're going to go one, two. So we're going to get a new tile here, which is the fort. Nice. And another tile up here, which is the Holy Spire. Right. Okay, so I've moved. That's that done. Do I want to visit... I think I do. Yeah, I think I want to visit. I'm going to visit the fort. Visiting the fort gets me two strength, but places one of these cubes there and there. Okay. And now I'm going to activate my character to get another strength. And because I activated my character, I'm going to use Tick Tick's ability, and this time I'm going to convert, which is to remove a defilement from Tick Tick back to here. And I can augment. There you go. Are those square cards with standard width so you could chop up some penny sleeves? Um, well, first of all, don't use penny sleeves. Penny sleeves are awful and, and, and a waste of money, uh, is my opinion on the penny sleeves. 
Um, are they standardized? I'm not sure. They look, to, I mean, you can buy square sleeves. So yeah, if you wanted to sleeve them, I would recommend square sleeves, but yeah, I can't, I, I, I can't say anything good about penny sleeves. They are, they are, they are awful. They just stick together. You can't shuffle them. They're, they're awful. Rick's here. Hi, Rick. Thank you for joining in. And yeah, Steve the Snail is joining us. Thank you for noticing. Right. So we're done. What did we do? We moved. This is the problem we're talking to you in the chat is I forget where I am. I've moved, I've visited and I've activated and I've used that. So I think that's me done. Right. This moves two spaces. Off we go again. Do I get the points from that? I think I do. I think I should have added the points from that. Yeah. Yeah, I should have done. Right. Okay, so I have a plan. It's not quite going to work, though. No, it's not quite going to work. So we are going to go on a little bit more of an exploration because I like exploring. So we're going to go one, two. That's going to reveal a tile here, which is the library. Nice. That's what we needed. And also another library. So we have a great library next to each other. OK, so that's movement done. I am then going to visit and I'm going to visit this library. No, I'll visit that library. So we get no that that library. Yeah. So we get a cube on there and a cube on there. So this is running dangerously low. I am then going to activate my character to gain um, a knowledge. Oh, I forgot to I forgot to gain the two knowledge for for the library. OK. And then we're going to use Tick Tick's ability to again convert that back into there and I'm going to augment again. OK, I think that's right. Um, OK, so we've moved, we activated my character, we used Tick Tick and we visited the library. OK, now I'm a little bit short on stuff, so I am going to convert two inspiration and two strength into two courage. And OK, I think that is the end of my turn. So the flow of this is quite nice. Right, I now need to go and visit the monastery to use my knowledge to do this, which means I can vindicate myself. That's my plan. So I'm moving. Yeah, we're going to move first. I'm then going to visit the monastery, which means these two go on here. So this is this is dangerously close now. OK. But I'm going to visit the monastery. I'm going to spend five knowledge to put all that five into there. Which means as a bonus action, I can vindicate myself. If you meet the criteria, you can move from wretched to vindicated. And I think the criteria is unless I've completely messed this up. You must augment all of your potential. Oh, and you've got to be on 25 honour. Right, OK. <laughs> I'm nowhere near 25 honour. Right, OK. So you can't just do it straight away. Yeah. OK, so I'm going to need to get myself 25 honour. OK, am I happy with doing that? Yeah, I think I think I am. That That's fine. That's fine. Now, what I've not done is I've not activated myself yet. So I'm going to activate myself and I am going to put another inspiration in there. And then I'm going to use Tick Tick. To put that back in there. Wowzers. Yeah, OK, I think that's what we're doing. OK. Done. Turn over. Moves on. <sighs> right. OK. OK, I'm just checking the chat, see if I've missed anything. Uh, and I haven't. People are talking about getting their own copies of it. Cool. Right. So my go. I'm going to go to the gaping wall. Oh, but if I do that, I can't do that. Ah, mess this up. I've not messed it up. It's just 
It's just really hard. Keeping an eye on all of these black cubes. So yeah, I think what we're going to do is I'm just going to move to here. So that's my movement done. I'm going to activate my own character to get Uh, I don't know. Let's get another inspiration. Okay, and then I'm going to take this cube off here and put it onto there. So that's activated, I've moved, and I'm not going to visit. Instead of visiting, I'm going to rest, and that goes to there. Okay, end of turn. Tick. Next turn... I'm going to activate my character first to gain a strength and then I'm going to absorb that. So that's activation done. Then I'm going to visit. Yes, I'm going to visit here. So when I visit, I'm going to visit the gaping mall. So that goes on there and that goes on there. I spend my two courage. And now I can either fight this monster, which is Ogun the Living Bark, at game end two honour for each of your traits. Am I planning to get many traits? I think I'm just going to take the one off the top of the deck. So this is the one we're fighting. It is Vishne, Warden of the Crags. Um, but before you do that, you're supposed to nominate your champion, aren't you? But it's going to be that one. Uh, companions, power board, visiting regions. Where is it? Monsters. Here we go. Um, so you need to identify your champion. This is the companion in your party with the lowest number. That's got number one. So it's definitely that one. You always win. Honour is gained immediately. So it's worth six. Nice. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Um... You must be adjacent to the gaping moor. Use two courage. When defeating a monster, you can either... Yeah, there is no limit. Yeah. Defeated monsters count towards courage mastery at the end of the game. Yeah. Um, and then you roll the dice. Now, normally you would roll both uh, that one and that one, I guess. I don't know what this is that's come with the expansion. I don't know yet, but they've got rounded edges, which are nicer. Um, so normally you would roll both dice, but the special ability is when attacking a, an, when attacking a monster with Ruak as your champion, you roll the white attribute dice twice instead of rolling both dice, which means you can't die. So, so he then rolls that. Um, so yeah, roll the white attribute twice, dice twice. So I get that, which is inspiration, and that, which is knowledge. There you go. So yeah, you just can't die. That seems really good. Roll the black and the white dice simultaneously. Yeah, okay, cool. Right, so we did that. Uh, so what did we do? Uh, we haven't moved yet. We activated. We visited. We haven't moved, and you have to move. Moving is not optional. Um, we have this, where should we put this? I should put that there, that's fine. This has been defeated. So it's worth six points. Um, oh, and at the end of the game, gain six honour if you have at least one relic, one trait, and one monster. Right, well, I have one monster, so I'm now going to set about getting myself a trait and a relic. I, ha I now have an objective, which is good. So where are we going to move to? Uh, well, I'm just going to move one. Okay, end of turn. Time ticks down. My go again. We're not quite at 25. We can't quite vindicate ourselves yet. Could go and get another companion. Hmm. Need to be careful about these mastery tiles. Oh, yeah, I could go and get this companion. Okay, could do that, but you need the shrine to get your influence back from your companions. 
Yeah, okay. I think I think we're okay. I think if I've got this right, I'm gonna go one, two. Ah, now. Now I've got to be very careful here. We have no cubes left. We have no defilement blocks left, so I can't add two. So I can't be visiting locations. No, right now I can't be visiting locations. So we're just gonna to have to go around and rest. So we're gonna just move to here. So there's the movement done. Uh, we are going to activate my character to get myself a knowledge. And then I'm going to use Tick Tick's ability to put that there. And then we're going to rest. Okay, there you go. Turn is done. I didn't visit. Yeah, I can't, I can't actually visit at the moment. That's really... Uh, these black cubes are hard. Right, okay. So time ticks down. My go again. I think we might go a monster hunting again. I think we will. So I'm going to move. So yeah, first thing I do is move to here. Second thing I do is activate my character to put another knowledge on there. And then I can use Tick Tick to put that there. So I've moved, I've activated. Now I'm going to act, uh, now I'm going to visit the gaping maw, which means I have to put these two cubes back on here. That cost me two courage. I don't have two courage, but I'll get two courage. There you go. Okay, so I have two courage, which I then spend to fight another monster. And again, Ruak is going to be my champion, and this time it is Oya Carnivorous Blossom. It's worth five. One, two, three, four, five. Um, and I roll the two white dice again. So that's a vision and a strength. Okay, and at the end of the game, I get seven honor if there are no blocks in your power board's potential sphere. Awesome, right, so that's a bonus seven points at the end of the game. Already, I can tuck these in, actually. I don't need them anymore. Now, here's the thing. A number of things are now gonna happen. I am gonna vindicate myself because I have no blocks in my potential and I'm at 25 honor so I am vindicated that's worth five points one two three four five that's going to trigger in a second in fact we should do that now yeah so every time you pass one of those spaces you roll both black dice okay right okay so we've got fatigue add one influence to all companions and death, your champion dies, can prevent it during by spending a conviction. I have a conviction, so I prevent the death. Okay, and then the next thing I'm going to do is because I have two orange cards, I am going to, whatever that's called, convert, and then I'm going to spend two courage or use two courage to get rid of the proficiency token out of the game, which means this goes on the board. Now, this is the bit I'm going to read again. Uh, and this is... Right, mastery tiles. Once you have unlocked the proficiency, immediately place the mastery tile along the edge of the scoring track, alongside one of the numbered spaces. So it's the fives and the tens that are numbered. Uh, place it between your scoring marker and the end game marker. Right, so my scoring marker is there, the end game marker is there, I'm going to put it here. Okay, and basically as soon as I get to there, I get it. Nice. Okay. Did I do everything? I visited, I moved, I activated, but I had to do it in that order. I think we're done. Right. Ticks two. Um, my go. So we now need to go on Operation Cleanup again. And we need a relic and a trait. Okay, we're looking, we're looking good. Uh, I think we're just going to move to here. I'm going to activate my own character. I'm going to get two inspiration. And I get to absorb this. Okay, and then I am resting, which means I can augment. So I moved, activated rested nothing else i want to do no we're good right time ticks on next turn 
I'm going to move one, two. I'm going to activate my character to get two strength. I am going to take this off and put it on here. And then I'm going to rest. Lots of resting in this game. Moves on. Next turn. There's going to be a lot of repeating of this while I clear up these cubes. So I'm going to move. I'm going to activate my character. I'm going to get two more strength. I am going to put... I'm going to take... Oh, I mean, do we just go around taking these off? Yeah, I think so. There, that's coming off. Okay, and then I'm resting. I probably shouldn't have... When I, when I spent all of that knowledge earlier to get rid of all of that from there to there, because I'm going to have to be resting a lot, this is interesting, um, I'm getting free augments all of the time. So yeah, that's potentially something I shouldn't have done. Anyway, right, time ticks on. My go again. Um, yeah, I think we're going to do it this turn, I think so. No, I can't. <sighs> okay, I'm just going to move one to here. I'm going to activate my character to get two inspiration. I'm going to combine two inspiration with two knowledge for two wisdom. Um, because I activated my character, I can convert. So that one goes back there. And then I'm resting. Look at all this conviction. You never have this much conviction in a multiplayer game because you're using it to control regions all the time. Okay, time ticks down. I'm going to move again. I'm going to activate my character again. I'm going to get two knowledge. I'm then going to convert two knowledge and two strength into two vision. I'm then going to use tick tick to put that back over there. And then I'm going to rest. Okay, now we can actually do something. So time ticks on. Ah, we've landed on another one of those spaces. So we roll both the black dice. And bad stuff happens. So death, which I prevent. And then fatigue, that goes on there. Okay, right. I think we're doing okay. We are doing okay. Yeah. People are chatting away. Jonathan's here from the Hexy Beast. Successful Geek is here. Uh, Michael's here. He's calling me old chap again. Why do you keep calling me old? I'm 27, Michael. I keep telling you. I keep saying old chap. Uh, and Frodo's here. Yeah, I'm, yeah, feel free to chat amongst yourselves in the chat. Um, it's nice to see people sort of getting to know each other because there's regular people in the chat. Um, and I know some people think it's bad form to start sharing about your channel in another person's video. I have no problem with it whatsoever. So anybody who is in the chat who has their own YouTube channel, feel free to share it. Um, yeah, so yeah, Hexy Beast is relatively new to gaming and he's got his own YouTube channel. Go and subscribe, support all new people into the board game hobby. Right, okay, where are we gonna go? If only I could remember. That's the thing with old age, Michael. Forget what I'm doing. <laughs> I think it's my go. <clears throat> so we've got two cubes there. We've got, yes, I, I did have a plan. Right, so I'm gonna move. I also had a plan to get that. Ooh. I'm gonna move one, two to there. So that's my movement done. I'm gonna visit the ancient tomb, which puts a cube on there and a cube on there. At the ancient tomb, I'm gonna spend this two wisdom to buy a relic. Now, I don't think I want that relic. This is not a relic, a relic, a trait. So I'm gonna take this one. So I have got diligence, which is worth four. One, two, three, four, which means I get this and throw it away. There you go. So that's mine. When you attain a trait, acquire a relic or defeat a monster, you may org one influence to conviction. That's fine. Okay, and that's a green card. So we probably want another green card. Um, right. Okay, am I done? No. I haven't activated my character yet. So we're going to activate my character and we're going to take, we're going to get another two knowledge. And because I've activated my character, I am going to absorb that onto there. There's a lot of resting in this game. Okay, 
Next turn. I have to move, so I do. I'm going to activate my character, and I'm going to get two inspiration. I'm going to combine that two inspiration with the two knowledge to get two wisdom. And then I'm not going to visit because I would lose the game. So I rest. Um, which means I do that. And I haven't used tick-tick yet, so I'm going to use tick-tick. And we're going to put this... We're going to take that one back. We're just going to absorb that. Yeah, I think we're just going to have a slow approach of going around and resting every, every, every few turns. You just need to rest. So, next turn. Uh, move. Doesn't really matter where I move to because I'm not visiting. So I move. Now, at this point, I can't really activate my character because... Ah... Okay, so I'm running out of influence. I've got too much conviction. Yeah, that's a problem, isn't it? Okay, so I'm going to combine the strength and the knowledge to get a vision. I am activating my character. And I'm going to have... What do we need? I don't know. I'm going to take two knowledge. Okay. And then I'm going to convert that back there. And then I'm going to rest. But the resting now does nothing. Oh, and in fact, converting gets me augmenting, augmenting as well. Okay. So there is something which I don't think I've ever done before, which is recover influence. You can, as a bonus action at any time, recover a block of influence, recover a block to your influence sphere from anywhere except your potential. So yeah, if you really wanted to, you could move this stuff back because at the moment, being it in here, I've got too much conviction. Um, I've also got too much cat hair. Um, so there you go. Yeah, this is fascinating. Right, time takes on. I'm going to move to here. I'm going to activate my character. Before I activate my character, I am going to recover some influence. Now I'm going to activate my character and I'm going to put two strength in there. Then I get to use Tick Tick again, and I'm going to convert, which means I get a free augment, which I can't use. And then I'm going to rest, which means I get an augment, which I can't use. Okay. Tick. Next turn. I think it's time to go visiting. I think we need to get another, another companion from the inn. So I'm going to move. I'm going to visit the inn, which... In fact, I'll move two. So visit the inn. I put that on there and that on there. I spend two strength. Do we want this one? No. We'll take this one instead. So this is worth two points. And it is Zara, daughter of flame. You may split your movement before and or after your actions however you wish. Okay, that's all right. But I have two red cards. I haven't activated my character yet. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to activate my character. Those two go there. I am going to absorb this one. And then, as a bonus action, because I have two red cards, I spend two strength and I unlock that proficiency, which means this goes on the board and it goes there which means I'm pretty sure to get that. Okay, time ticks on. Next turn, we're going to have to go converting again. Yeah, so we, we move, uh, we activate my character, and I'm going to put two knowledge on there, um, and we're going to put that back there. And then I'm going to rest, which does nothing. Yeah, definitely shouldn't. I, I definitely underestimated the amount of times I would be resting in this game. So I, I shouldn't have used this monastery as much as I did early. If I play this solo mode again, I will do that next time. Right, time ticks on. My go. I move. Um, I'm going to convert that into that and that into that. Can't visit yet. No, I'm going to activate my character. 
uh, which means I get to put that back there and I can augment and then I'm going to rest. Oh no, I can visit now. Ah, but I've got these cubes in the wrong place. Ah, coices. Yeah, the cubes are in the wrong place. Okay, I think I'm done. Turn is done. Right, okay. Time ticks on. My go again. Right, let's get this right this time. So I'm going to go... One, two. So that's my movement done. If I visit, we get a destroyed location. Now, these destroyed locations, they're not... I, I, I'm doing my best to avoid these destroyed locations. Maybe I shouldn't. I'm, I'm just scared. Destroyed locations. Cover the region with the destroyed region and place both the block and defarm blocks on it. The region cannot be used for the rest of the game. Okay, so I don't get the blocks black. Blocks black, blocks back. So I probably don't want to do that. I don't think I want to do that. No. Okay, so what have we done? We've moved. I'm just going to activate my character to get nothing. Okay, so I'll, I'll recover influence. I will activate my character to get two strength back. Uh, and I will absorb this one. Okay, and then I'm not visiting, so I'm resting, but that doesn't do anything. Okay, time ticks on, it goes there, we roll both the black dice. Double fatigue. Now, I don't actually have an influence, so I don't know what happens here. Gareth's got to go, thank you very much Gareth for joining in. Uh, at this point, I need to add one influence to my companions, and it doesn't say what happens if I don't add influence. Maybe there's something in the base game that I, I have missed. But let me know. Um, should I be? Should I have to recover my influence first? Let's have a look at fatigue because it's it's in here under the combat rules. Fatigue. You must add two influence to your champion. You may recover influence if necessary. It says you may. It doesn't say must. I think that should say must. Oh, John's just popped in as well. Uh, the coins on the corner. I'll take care of that in a minute, and I don't think he did. No, I, d I think I did. Yeah, I think when I got to there, I think... Did I, or did I not? Yeah, the token on the left of the outside track. So how many times have we done the thing? We should have done it once, twice, three times. Yeah, you're right. What happens... Maybe I didn't. Okay, maybe I missed it once. So I'll roll again. So I'm rolling both the black dice and the white dice. No, sorry, both roll both black dice. Okay, so yeah, I, I might have forgotten to do that one or that one. So I'll do it now. So that's a death and a fatigue. So anyway, we, we are at the point where I was adding two fatigue, wasn't I? Or was that that? Was that what we've just done? Oh, I'm getting confused. <laughs> I'm getting very confused now. Um, yeah, my question is, I now need to add fatigue, and it says you may... I think that should be must. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to treat that as a must, and I'm going to do that, and I'm going to put that one on there, and that one on there. Oh, and in fact, I rolled both of those symbols, didn't I? So in fact, I've got to do that, and I've got to do that, and I've got to do that. Now, this is going to be tricky. Because if you ever recover influence from a companion, you lose the companion. I need the shrine. Oh, man. Okay. I think, that, I think that's good. I might have done it slightly wrong, so apologies if I did. But you're getting a good idea of how it plays. Um, yeah, and I've completely lost track of where we are. So I think... I think it's my go. 
Yeah, I ha I have lost track. I think it's my go. Uh, I did. It works differently in solo. Yeah, every time either my marker or the end game marker reaches one of these, I roll both black dice and, and bad stuff happens. But right now, I can't remember exactly where we were. I can't remember if it was in the middle of my turn or... Because I, I know I was about to visit the ancient tomb. I just... Okay, let's say it's my go, and you'll correct me. You'll correct me if I'm wrong. So it's my go. The first thing I'm going to do is visit. I'm going to visit the ancient tomb. That puts a cube on there and a cube on there. Uh, and I don't like this card, so I'm actually going to take... Well, I didn't like that card. Let's have a look. No. So I'm going to spend two wisdom to take this, which is creativity. Gain two honour each turn. You convert... Gain two, two honour each turn you convert to wisdom. Okay. Right. So I gain five straight away for doing it. One, two, three, four, five. Which gets me this. So that's another five points at the end of the game. Time is running out now. We are getting close to running out. And if I need a relic to get six points, that's what I need. But before we do that, I'm going to spend these two wisdom because I have two green cards. I'm going to unlock that mastery, which is a little bit dangerous because I've got to get there before this gets there. Otherwise, I lose the seven points. But let's go for it. Yeah, let's go for it. So we've visited. I haven't activated my character yet. So I'm going to, and I'm going to add, oh, I've got loads of stuff now, haven't I? I'm just going to add that, which means I can also put that on there. Okay. Um, I don't know if I've moved. So I'll move. Right, that ticks down. Yeah, running out of time now. I need another relic, and I actually need six points. So this is going to be tricky now. This is definitely going to be tricky. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to activate my character. I'm just going to put those in there. I am going to absorb this. Um, and it says, gain two honor each turn you convert to wisdom. So I will convert that one and that one to a wisdom and that gets me two honor which means I've passed another one of those, so I roll both of these. Ouch! So that's fatigue on each of my characters and fatigue on each of my characters. So I'm going to need to recover some of this stuff to put some super fatigue on these characters. Wow, they're exhausted. Um, and then I'm going to... I'm going to rest. Yeah. That's all I can do. Time ticks on. I'm not going to do it, am I? Or am I? Okay. Maybe I will. Next turn, I'm going to move uh, to here. I'm going to activate my character and I'm going to absorb that. And then I'm going to rest. Okay, time ticks on. Next turn, I am going to move to here. Am I going to do it? I think I'm going to do it just in time. Um, I'm going to activate my character and I'm going to absorb that. And now I'm going to visit. I'm going to visit. Oh no, I can't visit because of that. So I'm going to rest. Okay. Time ticks on. Last turn of the game. First thing I'm going to do, activate my character, not get anything, but I'm going to convert that back into there. Second thing I'm going to do is visit the arcane tower. Arcane tower, I get to spend two vision to take this, which is worth six points. One, two, three, four, five, six, which gets me this. 
and causes the end of the game. Uh, yeah, whatever. Uh, and I'm actually, I'm actually going to convert an inspiration and a knowledge into a wisdom, which gets me another two points. Done. Right. Okay, I think that is it. Oh, and I've got to move. Boom. Right, okay. So the end of the game has been triggered. So what we now have to do is we add up. So mastery tiles earned. So I got 7, 12, 17. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, uh, plus 11. And I know you can't hear this, but it's raining outside and it sounds really nice. End game bonuses on cards. 7 honour if there are no blocks in your potential sphere. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. If I have a relic, a trait and a monster card, which I do, I get another 6 points. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Uh, lose honour, defilement blocks in play. And these count as in play. So there are 9 in play, so I lose 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Minus 3 for each region that's destroyed and minus for each mastery tile that is around the board that I didn't get. If your scoring marker is on a space of higher numerical value than the end game marker, which is a long winded way of saying, if I've got more than this, then I win. I won. And there you go. That is the solo game. That is solo adventure number one of Vindication. Right. My very, very quick thoughts. I like this game. I'm doing a review of this game. Uh, yeah, either at the end of this week or next week or the weekend, depending on how I get on with the rulebook work I've got to do. I really like Vindication. So playing the solo game was enjoyable because I like the game. Okay. As a solo game, and I don't know if my game here that I've played is indicative of other solo games, is that I won quite easily on my first game of this. I don't like winning on my first game of something. I want a solo game to be more of a puzzle, more of a challenge. Unless I looked out and got it exactly right, I was expecting not to win by this amount or for it to be, or, or to lose. Um, I certainly made a couple of mistakes, as I've mentioned a couple of times, is because every time you visit a location, two of these blocks get added to the board. And if there are ever no blocks available, you lose the game immediately. And the only way to get blocks back is by absorbing them onto here and then converting them. And you only convert one at a time. That's a really slow process. That means you can't visit the locations every turn. You are going to have to be resting. And I think I ended up out of three turns, I probably visited and then rested and rested. So you're going to be resting a lot. And every time you rest, you get to augment one of your cubes. So yeah, so I definitely didn't need to do the whole knowledge thing early on. So yeah, I found it a little easy. It was enjoyable to play. I need to check the rule book to see if there are ways of increasing the difficulty because I'm, I'm not sure there are. There's nothing in here, but, and I know some people don't like it when I make suggestions, but you could just start that end game scoring marker closer towards you. We both started on 15. What I could have done is I could have started that end game scoring marker on the 10, which means I would have had two or three fewer turns. And yeah, so you, you can adjust the difficulty. It's a shame they didn't put that in there unless they did and I've missed it. Um, because, you know, I played, I played Solo Adventure 1, which is the first four pages. Then you've got Solo Adventure 2, which is the ne next four pages. And ah, the difficulty adjustment here but that's for Solo Adventure 2. Was there any difficulty adjustment for Solo Adventure 1? There wasn't. And there should be. I, I believe every Solo game should have a customizable difficulty level. Because otherwise, you've played it, I've won. What, what's going to make me want to play this adventure again? Nothing. Unless I, manual, unless I, I, I use my own method for making it more difficult. Um, I'm keen to try Solo Adventure 2. I don't have time today. It's three o'clock, so we're about an hour, which is good, because I've got, I've got rule book work that I need to do this afternoon. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's, there's other stuff about this game that I haven't uncovered yet. The Solo version is available in the Leaders... Uh, where is it? Yeah, it's this expansion here, which is Leaders and Alliances. There's other stuff in this box. 
he says. Can I open it? Yeah. So there's there's a whole bunch of other stuff in this box that I haven't covered yet. This is not for the solo game. This is for the multiplayer game. Um, but it's it's extra stuff that I haven't looked at. And there is still the Monuments expansion from the base game that I've not looked at yet. And I really would like to um, before doing the review, but I just don't think I'm going to get a chance. Anyway, thank you very much for joining me today. Uh, I hope you found that useful. There's a lot of talk about the weather in the, in the chat, which is, which is good. Um, maybe Adventure 1 is supposed to be easier. Yeah, even if Adventure 1 is supposed to be easier, they should have done a customizable difficulty. I, I'll be mentioning that in the review, but yeah, I don't see any reason why they couldn't have... Couldn't have made it customizable. Um, yeah, as mentioned at the start, this is not a sponsored video. I've basically taken a couple of hours out of my paid work this afternoon to produce this video. It is fully funded through the Patreon campaign. I know a lot of you watching are Patreon supporters of mine, so thank you very much for that. It's, uh, it's your support that makes these videos possible. And if you like the content that I make, please consider supporting me on patreon.com. The link is there. Um, and yeah, the more support I get through Patreon, the more stuff that I create. So. That's everything for today. Thank you very much for watching. Take care, everybody. I will be back at, what's my next stream? Two o'clock tomorrow um, with something a bit different. I'm going to be playing through the uh, Frostpunk computer game tomorrow at two o'clock. Why am I covering a computer game? It's because there is going to be a Frostpunk board game, which I'm actually working on the rulebook for this week. So I'm very excited about it. Uh, and I'm going to take an hour off tomorrow and just bring you some content of, of a video game. And then I'll be back on Friday with a couple more streams. So yeah, thanks very much for watching. Take care, everybody. I'll see you next time. Proudly sponsored by Game Toppers, upgrading your gaming experience. Visit GameToppersLLC.com.